After I posted the Liana Stark video, I received a bunch of really great questions. So I wanted to take a video, especially since the second video each week is supposed to be a light, a Song of Ice and Fire video, which I never seem to manage, and talk about some of those questions. I tried writing out answers to all the questions and it came to about 30 minutes, so I had to kind of pick and choose from them instead of doing all of them. I want to note that since we don't have a lot of information on Liana, that a lot of this is speculation and guessing based on information. You could have a very different view. My hope for this video is that it's more of a discussion video that creates dialogue in the comment section than it is a straight, here's what you should believe which I think makes this video more of a discussion video than a Q&A one. The first question I really liked, does the rest of the Seven Kingdoms know how Lyanna died? What do people believe? I'm going to guess that a great deal of the Seven Kingdoms believe what Robert Baratheon has been spewing. Rhaegar kidnapped her, raped her a lot, and she died during the war. Heck, even some of the Starks are under the impression Rhaegar kidnapped and raped Lyanna, which he very well could have. So a good chunk of people probably believe she died from Rhaegar's abuse or some other complication during her abduction, such as a sickness or fever. However, there are a significant number of people, especially small folk, that loved Rhaegar. They may believe, regardless of Robert's input, that Lyanna left with Rhaegar of her own free will and again just died from complications during the war. I do find it interesting no one ever says Rhaegar killed her, or, or rather how. Usually just talk of rape and kidnapping. I think someone brought up something about the Kingsguard killing Lyanna, and I think most likely few if any people in the Seven Kingdoms think that one of the three Kingsguards killed her. Number two, what did Ned tell Robert about the Tower of Joy and Lyanna's death? That question has fascinated me for so long. Ned did tell Robert that he was with Lyanna when she died. And some people speculate Ned didn't know what to tell Robert at first and needed time to convince himself of what he needed to do and taking the Sword Dawn to Starfall gave him that time to think things over and prepare himself to face Robert. I still feel that he returned Dawn to Starfall for other reasons, but it did give Ned time to think and calm himself. If Lyanna was in fact pregnant, there is no way in seven hells Ned told Robert about it, especially with Ned coming home with a little baby John. Ned was smart enough to know that could seriously endanger the kid's life and people would start to connect the dots. And I'm pretty sure if Ned had told Robert Lyanna was pregnant from Rhaegar's raping, it likely would have come up during Robert's how many times did he rape her rants. He'd add on something like, and she died birthing his dragon spawn he forced on her, or something more dramatic. But we never hear about her pregnancy, so either she wasn't ever pregnant or Ned kept that to himself. Well, and Howlin. Robert would also be aware that he killed Rhaegar quite a bit before Lyanna's death at the Tower of Joy. So he knows Rhaegar didn't directly slay her. However, he could believe her injuries from the ordeal finally took their toll on her. Or a random sickness, starvation, a cut, Really anything could have given her a fever that led to her death. So what did he most likely tell the king? Probably something along the lines of, I got to the tower, but she was already dying. I was too late. A fever took her. If Lyanna is supposed to be beautiful, why do they say Arya looks like her? Isn't Arya ugly? The general thought is Arya is an ugly duckling type story, but Arya isn't necessarily ugly and no one straight out calls her that. Jane Poole calls her Arya horseface, but kids are assholes, and Arya does have a long, stark face. Jane could have also called her that out of jealousy or distaste for Arya's personality, so she found whatever she could to attack her. This nickname stuck with Arya and gave her some confidence issues, and we see this because Arya, long after Jane gave her that nickname, still feels that she isn't pretty. Also, Arya is not a typical girly girl. She's usually covered in dirt, doing traditional boy activities, and doesn't really act like a lady. Pile that into a more aggressive personality, and it isn't a girl a lot of people would say is attractive, especially in that society. Traditionally, women that dress, look, and act like Sansa are considered more desirable or attractive in general. Arya definitely doesn't take care of her appearance like her sister. As well, seeing a girl covered in dirt and grime all the time isn't usually going to get a how beautiful response from those in the Seven Kingdoms. They're going to notice the dirt before they notice the beauty. And the beauty may be covered up by the dirt. I personally believe that Arya may have started out plain and then is slowly growing into a beauty. 
This becomes evident when the kindly man offers Arya the job of becoming a bravosi courtesan, and that songs will be sung of her beauty. If you're ugly, you probably wouldn't have songs sung of your beauty or guys fighting to sleep with you. The kindly man also states right out that Arya has a pretty face. We also don't know exactly how attractive Lyanna was, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Maybe Rhaegar and Robert found her attractive because of her wildness and not being a typical lady. Part of her beauty could have been that wildness. Lyanna also could have been an okay looking girl and then in her teens flowered and became more attractive. Same thing with Arya. It's also kind of unfair to compare an 8-9 year old to a teenager, especially since we don't know how attractive Lyanna was when she was a little bit younger or Arya's age. Why did Ned name his kids after his dead father and brother, but not his dead sister? That was odd to me as well. We see Rob, Robert Baratheon, John, John Aaron, Bran after the dead brother Brandon, and Rickon after the dead father Rickard. It does seem a bit off that Ned didn't name either daughter after Lyanna. There are a few thoughts why. Maybe Ned named the boys and Catelyn named the girls. Or all the names weren't really dedicated to anyone, just names they liked. Maybe Ned felt raising Lyanna's child, if you believe that theory, was enough of a tribute to her. Or maybe he was already so traumatized from holding his sister as she died, he didn't need any more reminders. If Lyanna was so worked up about Robert Baratheon never sticking to one bed, why did she basically become the other woman by running away with Rhaegar? Well, not everyone feels she ran away with Rhaegar, but he did actually kidnap her. There are also some that believe she went with Rhaegar not to be his lover, but to escape her marriage to Robert, or adventure given her wild wolf blood, or Rhaegar was saving her from his father who had figured out she was the Knight of the Laughing Tree. If he didn't kidnap her and she did run away with him and it was for love, that's a good question. Dorne is a bit more sexually liberated and Ilya could have given Rhaegar her blessing and Lyanna knew this. How liberated Dorne is and whether they'd be for this is a bit iffy. George said that the Dornishmen didn't support Rhaegar as strongly in part because of the anger at his treatment of Ilya. Was this treatment passing her over at the tourney at Harrenhal or abducting a woman and taking another lover? So the sexually liberated Dornish might not be the right answer, but more that Ilya and Rhaegar had a private understanding. Rhaegar could have had a whole discussion with Lyanna about Ilya supporting his need for the three heads of the dragon. But this becomes a bit sketchy when we look at the fact Aegon was born at the tourney of Harrenhal and Rhaegar seemed to be courting Lyanna at the tourney. It's believed Rhaegar only knew Ilya couldn't give him his third kid after her difficult pregnancy with Aegon. Georgia said Ilya and Rhaegar's relationship was complex, and we'd learn more about it in a future book. I'm assuming allowing your husband to sleep with another chick to fulfill a prophecy might make your relationship a bit complex. Or if Rhaegar really kidnapped and raped Lyanna, it might be a complex relationship that your husband is a rapist. There's also the belief that Lyanna was more upset about not having the choice of who she married more than she was upset about possibly having a cheating husband. Though I'm not convinced infidelity didn't bother her. Lastly, Lyanna could have run away with Rhaegar despite being the other woman because she's a hypocrite and or a wishy-washy teen. Very overlooked, Lyanna was a very young woman. A ridiculously handsome prince whose songs make you cry because they are so beautiful comes to you and says, hey, you need to fulfill this prophecy to save the Seven Kingdoms with me. And then boom, she's running off with him. People do grow up faster in a medieval society. But that doesn't change how fast your brain makes connections, and we already have lots of studies proving those risky decisions that adults generally are better at handling are because of the time it takes your brain to develop. Pre-25 year olds just aren't as able to use their frontal lobes as well as those over 24, which helps with deciding if those things are a good idea to do. Now imagine a teenager. They don't always make the best decisions. If you remember being a teenager and some of the decisions you made, I remember some of mine. What other promises besides keeping her son safe could Lyanna have made Ned promise? Ned made multiple promises to Lyanna. If the promise didn't involve Jon Snow, there are a couple obvious ones, or obvious to me. There's probably a lot of obvious ones that I'm missing. There's what Ned has said. She wanted to be buried at home next to her family. A scared, dying teenager asking to be brought home isn't too crazy of a request, especially dying in an unknown territory very different from the place you grew up. She could have also made Ned promise not to tell Robert she was in love with Rhaegar. And there's another theory that she made Ned promise that when Jon was old enough, he'd tell him the truth of what happened between Lyanna and Rhaegar. 
This could be why Ned thinks of broken promises before his death. The darkest theory I've read was that one of the promises she forced Ned to agree to was killing John because he was a product of rape. That one doesn't completely line up though, but kind of an interesting dark thought. During Robert's rebellion, what was Liana doing? If she was kidnapped and being raped, probably busy being kidnapped and raped. If she was pregnant, she was most likely holed up with Rhaegar and spending time with him. I have a feeling she wasn't aware of what was going on with the rest of the Seven Kingdoms. If she was freely with Rhaegar and knew, I'd imagine she would try to get to them or help them understand the situation. Of course, maybe that's why Rhaegar left her. He told her to stay put while he dealt with it and smoothed everything over. And if she did know what was happening at one point, there could have been reasons she couldn't get somewhere to tell someone, including being heavily pregnant. If you want to go tinfoil here, there's a theory Liana tried writing slash left letters telling her family or others what was up, but someone made sure that those letters were never seen. Lastly, what is the craziest Liana Tower of Joy theory you have or you have heard? This is not my theory, but every time I think about it, it just seems horrible. Ned had to perform a C-section on Liana, which would be absolutely traumatizing for any brother. All right, that was my first Q&A video that was really more of a discussion. Feel free to disagree. As I said, a lot of what we have is speculation. If someone tries to tell you you're wrong and they know for sure, they're full of it. Besides that, make sure you hit the like button and next video is likely a theory video. Sorry if you hate those. We'll eventually get to poor Benjen. Poor, poor Benjen. Thanks for watching.